Years, the order would provide an additional $400 a week, among other provisions. News 8's Brennan Lewis looks at questions surrounding who is paying for that and controversy over the order's legality as local lawmakers demand answers from EDD over the first round of unemployment benefits. Stephen and Alicia, there's still no timeline yet on when Americans can expect to receive that extra $400 that President Trump signed into effect. Obviously, EDD and unemployment offices all across the country are still plagued by delays from the first program. With the stroke of a pen, President Trump signed four executive orders that he says will help Americans struggling with the financial fallout of the pandemic and may have also created a legal challenge in the making. I would actually say it's fairly clear that the president of the United States, whoever the president is, doesn't have the authority to do this. Congress controls federal finances, but with negotiations stalled, the question is whether Democrats have the political will to challenge it. So President Trump basically said, I dare you Democrats to sue because if you sue, it's going to look like what it is that you don't care about your country, according to him. Also at issue is who's going to pay for the extra $400 a week to unemployed Americans. His order forces states to kick in a fourth of the payment. That would have been a quarter billion dollars a week in June for California alone. Plus, there's the question of how it gets to people. EDD is increasingly coming under heavy scrutiny. There was no planning by EDD to help any of us. As some applications from the first program remain stalled for months. I was verified on May 15th. They don't have anybody to remove the block in the system. They don't know how to do it. Find somebody to do that and get push us our money now. More than 60 legislators, including several from San Diego, joined with others across the state to demand accountability and progress. This is not uh, a cable bill. This is not, you know, your phone bill. This is um, your unemployment benefits, which is frankly your livelihood, you know, paying your bills, uh, buying food for your family. You know, you know, the stakes are, are very, very high. And so we need to get it right. Attorneys for Democratic lawmakers in Washington say they are still reviewing President Trump's order, but several have come out and said they believe it is unconstitutional, but just what steps they take still remain uncertain for the week ahead. Stephen Alicia. Brandon, thank you. Okay, so here are the latest coronavirus numbers just in from San Diego County. 417 new cases were reported today out of more than 6,200 tests, so that's a 7% positive rate. Total cases are now close to 33,000. There was one more new death reported today, so our total approaching 600, and there were four new community outbreaks reported, 24 now in all. However, COVID hospitalizations and ICU cases have fallen, so that's some good news. They're now at their lowest levels in at least a month. that many students work hard to get into the college of their dreams. Now, for some, it's in their own hometown, but for others, they're heading across the country. But no matter where students are going to school this year, the experience without question is going to be unlike any other before due to the pandemic. News 8's Carrie Lane spoke to some locals that are heading across the country for class and what the process to get back to school looks like for them. While many California schools are starting online only, there are other states that are experimenting with in-person learning. However, that does come with a whole new set of rules. They asked us to do like a two week like quarantine at home, try to limit exposure. Um, and then I flew to North Carolina. Aaron is the son of our very own Steve Price and is a freshman at Duke University. Today was move-in day, which looked a lot different than how most kids envision it growing up. And this morning I, checked in and they had me like immediately get COVID tested. Um, and then I'm supposed to now like sequester in my dorm room and only leave to get meals um, until I get the results back. Once school starts, students are required to monitor their symptoms daily. They give us like thermometers and then we're supposed to report um, other symptoms. Duke has also come up with a creative way to contact Trace and some classes are being held in person. We have like our card access to the buildings and they that's blogged, so they'll be able to see like who's in the same 
buildings. Everyone's in the same boat. We Meanwhile, Connor, who is also from San Some Diego, has recently here. arrived in New York, where he will be a junior at Syracuse University. So I'm glad they lifted the travel restrictions at least a little bit. I don't mind quarantining if it means we get to be out here. Similar to Duke's policy, students attending Syracuse are asked to quarantine for 14 days and then must be tested before going on campus. I had to fill out a form saying where I'll be for the next 14 days. So I get a daily text ask, asking me if I have any symptoms and um, how everything's going. Meanwhile, for those that will meet on campus for classes, the school has been providing the latest updates on their safety measures via email. One of them they sent out um, listed all the things that they bought. So it was like upgrade aid, uh, air ducts, and more masks and disposable masks and tons of plexiglass. Syracuse has also made it very clear that large gatherings are not allowed. There are going to be more patrols. There's more like uh, campus security officers, and they're watching out for that kind of thing, especially now. Um, and if you are caught at a party or mass gathering or something, they uh, have threatened disciplinary action. As for schools here in San Diego, I can tell you that SDSU is currently moving in their international students who will be required to quarantine for 14 days. Domestic students, they will move in between August 18th and 21st. They're not required to quarantine. Also, SDSU has a separate housing complex where they will send students who are ill to quarantine. Stephen Alicia, we'll get it back to you. All right, thanks, Karen. I tell you, as a parent, it's tough to send your kid across the country under these conditions. It, it definitely is, but I feel good about what the college is doing. They clearly have been very thoughtful through this whole process, mm -hmm. but now it's up to the kids, right? right? I mean, the kids really have to follow the rules. They've got to have small gatherings. They can't have these huge parties at this time, and as long as they realize this is the experience this year, I'm keeping my fingers crossed it's going to work out. I mean, they're so excited anyways, yes. going and starting their independence. It's going to be a different experience, but still an exciting one. Exactly. It'll be a different experience. Doesn't yeah. mean it's going to be a worse experience. Right. Just a, a different one. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations, Aaron. That's yes. awesome. Uh, if the college situation across the nation is any indication, parents and students are facing a school like unlike any other before. Now, we hope you'll watch our learning curve back to school news eight special. It's going to be on later tonight. We'll get answers for you that struggling parents, teachers and students have, and we're going to take you inside the classroom of the future. That's tonight at eight right here on CBS eight. A 50 year old woman is dead after being hit by a car last night near the Saquon Casino outside of El Cajon. Happened just after nine. The woman was walking in the traffic lanes of Dehesa Road when a car struck her. The driver went back to see what he had hit and found the woman lying on the roadway. She unfortunately died at the scene. It's unknown if she was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. A young man has died after his jet ski collided with a boat last night in Mission Bay. Happened around 630 near north end of Ski Beach. First responders did CPR on the man. After detecting a pulse, he was taken to the hospital. Unfortunately, he died today. Police interviewed the driver of the boat. So far, no charges have been filed. They say the man who died was in his 20s. He was from out of town. His identity isn't being released until next of kin are notified. A woman is under arrest accused of murdering her boyfriend in Spring Valley. We first told you about this investigation yesterday. 41 year old Manuel Castro was found stabbed to death in his apartment on James Circle. His girlfriend, 37 year old Aneka Arzib Arbizu, was, the, was on the scene when authorities arrived, and homicide detectives with the sheriff's department later arrested her in connection with Castro's death. A woman is recovering in the hospital after falling along a rugged trail in La Jolla. It happened late this morning on the Box Canyon Trail next to La Jolla Farms. The woman who's in her 20s was heading down the hill toward the beach when she slipped and fell about six feet and she hit her head. She was able to walk back up to the trailhead with some help and was then taken to the hospital. Lifeguards say that falls in that area are common. Uh, we do get a lot of calls down here, trip and falls. Uh, so it is a, a rugged terrain out here, so be very, very careful. And lifeguards remind beachgoers to bring appropriate footwear if you plan on hiking to and from the beach. And dozens showed up to Waterfront Park this afternoon. They gathered for what they say is a prayer rally. It's time to let all God's children go. And we are all God's children. Organizers say the local governments restrict their religious freedom to go to church, so around the country they organized a day of prayer in most cities to protest the safety procedures taken during the pandemic. Now witnesses tell us that there was little social distancing out there. 
A protest with social distancing in the South Bay today that involved a long line of cars. Uh, the crowd gathered to support the Black Lives Matter movement. It all started around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Caravan for Justice San Diego hosted the event starting at Choyas Lake and took participants around a six-mile loop. Everyone had a chance to decorate their car and show support for Black Lives Matter. Another beautiful weekend across the county. Can we expect much of the same in the week ahead? Let's go ahead and check in with meteorologist Sean Stiles. He joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast, Sean. Well, Steve and Alicia, this low pressure is keeping the marine layer very thin as it scours out. By mid-morning, we're seeing mostly sunny skies, and that means very warm temperatures in the inland microclimates. We're into the low 90s today, 92 in Valley Center, 90 both in Alpine and Ramona, 89 in El Cajon. Out along the coastline, mid to low 70s, upper 60s in Oceanside. This 77 in Del Mar is not the normal temperature. That reading station is down, so they're taking it from Del Mar Heights, so it's a little bit warmer there. And as you head towards the mountains, you're into the mid-80s. Starting to warm up, though, out in the deserts with 109 Borrego today. 75 tomorrow, 76, 77. Do you get the idea of a warming trend heading our way? Well, there is one. Uh, the first part of the work week won't really be all that much warmer. One or two degrees each and every day. It's when we get into say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, where things are really gonna start to warm up.